good day everyone. My name is Christy Handog, a student of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Social Studies, second year, from Negros Oriental State University. So for today's video, we are going to talk about the structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching. This is under the unit for learner-centered pedagogy. So without any further ado, let's get started. So guys, do you have any idea of what are these structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching? Alright, that's correct. So we have three structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching. The first one is the formal or traditional. The second is the alternative learning system or else. And under this, there are non-formal education, informal education, and the mobile teacher. The last one is the alternative delivery modes or ADM. And under this, there are modified in-school, off-school approach or MIMOSA. Enhanced Instructional Management by Parents, Community, and Teachers, or E-Impact. And the last one is the Open High School Program, or OHSP. So the first structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching is the formal or traditional education. So meaning this is the classroom based managed by trained formal school teachers. Usually, usually we are all undergoing this kind of system. Since the formal education is a classroom based, managed by the professional teachers, it is also structured by the curriculum, tasks, grades, and homeworks. Here are the examples of formal education, learning in school, school grading or certification, college and university degrees, plan education of different subjects having a proper syllable acquired by attending the institution. So here, these are the advantages and disadvantages of the formal education. Under the advantages, there is the punctuality, social interactions, extracurricular activities, and the face-to-face -face interactions. And in disadvantages, these are the generalized, generalized learning, passive learners, no flexible time, expensive, and teacher-centered learning. So the second one structures for facilitating learner-centered teaching is the alternative learning system or else. This is the opposite of the formal education. This is for those um, people who are not able to access the formal education. Here take a look at the comparison of alternative learning system versus the formal. In a classroom setting, the else is in community learning centers while in the formal, normally in school. In age of learner, in else, no age is prescribed. In formal, age is prescribed for every school year. In, the, in teacher here, are the in us facilitator and instructional manager must be trained in us, must be college graduate and must be HS graduate for evenness. And for the formal, it is called a classroom teacher, must be licensed or professional teacher, and must be an educate, education graduate, BS Ed or PSEED. Yeah. So take a look at this um, curriculum in their learning areas under the alternative learning system. These are the communication skills consist that consist of Reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and critical thinking and problem solving, expanding one's role vision, development of self, and a sense of community, and sustainable use of resources or productivity. So, how does ALS work? In alternative learning system, there are two major programs that are being implemented by the Department of Education, and through that, through the Bureau of Alternative Learning System or BALS. One is the basic literacy program and the other is the continuing education program or accreditation and equivalency. So, um, under the alternative learning system, the first one is the non-formal education. 
the target for this kind of structure is for those students who are not be able to read and write for those illiterate illiterate students and for those out of school youths and adults. So as what I have said earlier that the BALS or the Bureau of Alternative Learning System is carrying out the two major programs under the non-formal education. So the first program is the Basic Literacy Program or BPL. This is for those students that who doesn't know how to read and write. Also, um, to help them learn how to count, how to read, and how to write. The next one is the Accreditation and Equivalency Program. This is for those students that were not be able to avail for the formal education and drop out for elementary and secondary education. So the second one under the alternative learning system is the informal education. It means that for everything that we have done in our daily lives, this is the product of informal education. Just like um, our skills, our attitudes, and experiences at home or at work and from life itself. Unfortunately, uh, we should be able to attend the formal education because we need to have the requirement to pass. So take a look at for these examples under the informal education. But the next one is the advantages and this and the disadvantages of the informal education. Then last one under the alternative learning system is the mobile teacher. These are the teachers who are lived under the barangays or under the community and to train those students who are illiterate and out of school and for those who are willing to learn basic literacy skills. So I think it's hard to become a mobile teacher because, you know, they, they travel miles away to reach that, to reach in that kind of place. So how are the all mobile teachers? These are the mobile teachers have been deployed and assigned to areas for the enriched and underserved population of the country. So who are the benefit benefited from the ALS mobile teacher program? These are for those, yeah, that's what I said earlier. Their target is for those um, high illiteracy rate and for big number of school youth and adults and to improve their quality of their lives and help them become useful members in their community. So the third one structure for facilitating learner-centered teaching is the alternative delivery modes. The reason why there is the alternative delivery modes because we have a free and we have the right to have an education. So the so the first one that is under in alternative delivery modes is the modified in-school, off-school approach that is MISOSA. This class is divided into two groups, the in-school and the off-school. In in-school, there is typically a classroom setup inside the school. While the off-school, these are for those students who are giving um, learning activities just like modules, um, activities, homework, something like that. Some, uh, it is generally a self-learning. Since Ms. Sosa has, diff has the same process but different in competencies, something like that. So the Ms. Sosa uses the self-instructional materials or seems. These are the learning areas which learners can work on independently in a venue other than a regular classroom under the supervision of a teacher or facilitator. So the second one that 
that is under in alternative delivery modes is the enhanced instructional management by parents, community, and teachers for e-impact. It means that there will be a collaboration happen between the parents, the community, community and the teachers, and also the students itself. So in e-impact, in learning set, set up of e-impact, there will be a program teaching or employing bright peoples as program teachers who use specific teaching procedures, peer group learning or the grouping of six to eight pupils who are heterogeneous in ability or study in the same core modules, an individual study or self-instruction that allows the learner to learn at his or her own pace. So the last one that under the alternative delivery modes is the open high school program. So this is the this is for those students where dropouts were not be able to continue secondary education and also it will help them to complete secondary education and because some of the reasons why they are decided to drop out because of some financial problems um, living area something like that so the overall management of the OHSP shall be done through the dropout reduction program or door management structure so what are to be evaluated in the OHSP, who shall be involved. It will be the performance of the learner and the student, performance of the teacher implementers, and the overall implementation of the OHSP or the summative evaluation. So I think that's all. This is the resources page. You can check it out one by one. And thank you for listening everyone. Remember that teaching is listening and learning is talking by Deborah Meir. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a good day, everyone.